Uh, this video is to serve as an introduction to Pivot Farm and the core concepts behind uh, the research that we provide. Uh, let's start by telling you a little about us. We're a group of traders and market analysts and we provide support and resistance confluence zones that we call the power zones. We provide this data on a daily basis, uh, many hours before the trading session begins. And we also provide a data sheet with a variety of analysis information for traders, uh, including our interpretation of uh, the commitment of traders reports and a retail trader contrarian analysis uh, piece for FX also. Um, so lots of usable information for traders available uh, on a daily basis there. We provide this analysis uh, for the S&P, the Dow Jones, the Nasdaq, the Russell 2000. Uh, on the FX side we also take care of uh, the Euro, the Pound, the Yen uh, and uh, gold and oil on the commodity side. Okay, The core concepts behind what we provide uh, essentially revolved around support and resistance. Now support and resistance is a very straightforward and old school form of technical analysis. Um, we believe that it should form the bedrock of any traders interpretation of what's happening in the market. Support and resistance essentially is a technical interpretation of price based upon specific methodologies. These methods provide an indication of market dynamics in terms of supply and demand. Where supply overtakes demand, this is described as resistance, and where demand overtakes supply, this is support. Now, very simply, this essentially means um, that we may have a support area on this diagram here. Supply is coming, uh, demand, sorry, is coming into the marketplace, taking the price higher. We will then encounter uh, an area of resistance where, su where supply is likely to come in and taking the market again lower. It's this, this relationship between supply and demand that support and resistance can be used to highlight or predict. Uh, it's, it's a very simple and straightforward concept. Okay, well, looking at support and resistance at Pivot Farm, we, we kind of have a very unique take. And we what we like to do is put support and resistance into two different camps. So you have the proactive camp and the reactive camp. Uh, a reactive support and resistance uh, are forms of analysis that are based upon core price or volume action. So it's what really happened in the marketplace. And this is including things like volume profile, price swing highs and lows, initial balance, open gaps, the open high, low and close. This is very real information, what price actually did, where it went and um, you know levels of volume at those particular price points. On the flip side of that coin we have proactive support resistance. Now pro proactive support resistance is based upon price but it's more a derivative of price and that's that cannot be demonstrated any clearer than with calculated pivots. These essentially uh, are pivot points that use the open high low and close of a particular day and using a formula be it the Woody, Camarilla, uh, Daymark, they create certain support and resistance levels based upon that and these are all mathematically derived and it's much the same with Fibonacci, Elliott Wave, moving averages, market profile levels uh, and also trend lines. These are all derivatives of price and therefore in our mind proactive forms of support and resistance. Now these are a variety of analysis methods that we include in our thinking and we separate these now into two different camps. So what's what's the core concept of how we put all of this together? Well essentially what we what we describe our methodology as is technical confluence. What we do is using multiple support and resistance methodologies like the ones that we've just talked about, Fibonacci, Elliott Wave, etc. And we combine uh, these reactive and proactive approaches uh, into one core centric methodologies. We cross reference and compare these methods and find high probability areas where lots of these methods happen to coincide. Now how does this work uh, on a day-to-day -day basis? Well essentially you know we would get up at say five o'clock in the morning uh, to put together our analysis and it would start with looking at 
pricing the highs and lows. So we've got a chart here and it's got the blue lines are essentially describing the major price swing highs and lows. These are for multiple time frames. So you know the chart that we have here is a five minute chart. So it may not have, uh, although you may not be able to tell you know where that price swing is, um, it's it's also you know derived from another chart. Um, so we've got multiple time frames here. Um, the major price swing highs and lows are described, and then we would go about adding volume profile and the volume profile lines are here in red um, we you know you can see some of them happen to coincide with other pricing uh, highs and high and low levels uh, we would then start including the calculated pivots so these are using multiple methodologies including Woody, Camarilla, Daymark, whatever it may be um, there's quite a few methods that we employ there we then next go into the mix Elliott wave uh, uh, at the Elliott wave uh, lines are in pink here these are also for multiple time frames um, and then we st stumble across the Fibonacci clusters now you'll you'll notice that there's some key cluster zones emerging now with all these different methods coming into place uh, what we do with the Fibonacci clusters is relatively unique we um, look at Fibonacci uh, extensions and retracements across multiple time frames and where we actually get clustering of those different extensions and retracements across those time frames, those happen to be the green lines there. So it's the very best Fibonacci zones that you're seeing there. Um, finally, we'll we'll throw into the mix all the other different methods that we look at, including trend lines, open high, low, and close, open gaps. Uh, there's a variety of other methodologies that we include. Now you'll you'll notice that there's some key areas emerging here. Uh, key areas of you know clustering of different methodologies. Now, you you've, we've already created some high probability reversal areas here. Um, so, you know, what else do we include in our in our thinking? Well, we've defined high probability areas now. How do we take this edge further? How do we evolve with the market? Now, I'm sure what many traders have experienced is they've tried a certain system out. Uh, for a length of time. Over that time it's been working exceptionally well and then suddenly it stops working. Well one of the core reasons why that may happen is because of the market phase or personality changing. Now the market works through various phase, phases um, including accumulation, mark up, distribution, mark down uh, and back into accumulation. Now this is very high level. Um, what we like to do is drill down and find lots of sub phases so Things like, are we bullish or bearish? Are we in a trending or ranging market? Is, is the volatility high or low? And various combinations of all of these. What we've discovered is that in different market phases, say, <clears throat> for instance, the accumulation phase, uh, you'll find methods like volume profile work exceptionally well. Um, but in the markup phase, it won't work as well, and Fibonacci may become the top dog. And essentially, one of the key principles behind what we do at Pivot Farm is all about adapting and evolving with the market. So you've identified these key areas uh, using these price methodologies, but you know how much weight do we give these each individual method? Is an area with two methods weaker than an area with five? You know, what's the comparison? And we believe that our analysis of market statistics and phases and the strength of each individual uh, analysis uh, method within those phases is a key component. So what what we might do in some instances is favor an area uh, where because based upon the current market phase that area um, you know has the right methods even though there may be maybe less methods than another area uh, has the right methods for that particular market phase and those that would be more likely to become a power zone. Um, it's a very evolving and adaptive method that we use. Now essentially what we end with is our power zones and these are the core areas that we believe offer the highest probability of reversal into the uh, coming sessions.